Welcome back to Scruffy Tales. I'm Scruffy, and this is the Nerd Zone. And in this video, we will be talking about something that kind of has bugged me for a couple of years, to be honest, and it uh, deals with the subject of the court martial Luke Skywalker should have uh, gone through. Uh, that never happened uh, after the events of uh, A New Hope. So uh, let's get on with it and I'll uh, explain what I'm talking about. And it concerns the destruction of the Death Star. And no, I'm not talking about Luke Skywalker being responsible for killing what is it, a million people working on Death Star? Nothing like that at all. It concerns uh, the, the build-up leading up to the shot that was fired that eventually destroyed the Death Star. So, uh, yeah. So we have this uh, big, awesome, big, uh, small, awesome uh, space battle in and around uh, above the surface of the Death Star as it approaches the uh, moon of Yavin. Here's one thing I didn't get. The why didn't they just blow up the big gas giant and in that way just wipe out the moon as the, as the pla planet blew up? I mean, when they blew up Alderaan, I'm pretty sure they messed up the moons as well. Uh, anyway, so we're having this fight and it's awesome, they go into the trench and they're being chased and, you know, X-Wings are dropping like flies and it's a tense moment when we finally have, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker uh, being the last hope, the last chance for the Rebellion to survive this battle. And think about that for a second. The entire Rebellion... Um, rests on his shoulders at this point. And he needs to launch a torpedo into this ray-protected uh, shaft leading all the way down to the power generator. Uh, the built-in flaw, uh, as we learned in Rogue One. So he's chased by Darth Vader and TIE Fighters, and he's lining up the shot, and he needs to take it, he needs to hit, because if he fails, the Empire will win. So there's no room for error, there's no room for messing around. He needs to take that shot and hit. So what does he do? Now remember, we as the audience, we know what's going on. But no one else in universe knows what's going on. The re rebel leaders, the commanders, and everyone else down on the moon uh, watching the battle unfold on their uh, maps and screens and holograms, they have no clue that Luke Skywalker is talking to Obi-Wan Kenobi. All they know is that for no reason, Luke Skywalker switches off his targeting computer. The one thing we know the pilots need, they absolutely need this targeting computer in order to make this very difficult shot. And Luke Skywalker turns it off for no reason. And in so doing, he puts the entire rebellion at risk and everyone on that moon will more than likely die because of his de decision to switch off the targeting computer. That is what everyone else except us, the audience, will be seeing, will be fearing as they realize that, oh my God, this noob pilot, he's brand new. Remember, he's brand new to, re to the rebellion. No one really knows him. No one knows how good he is. Well, Biggs uh, covers for him, obviously. That's the reason why they're bringing him. But beyond that, I mean, Biggs is dead, by the way. So, I mean, there's no one left. And this guy, this unknown kid, turns off the targeting computer. And 
everyone in the rebellion from their point of view. This kid, he is chased by Darth Vader and TIE fighters, and he now, on a hunch, launches the torpedo. And luckily, it is a bullseye. But what are the odds? If, if you are one of the rebels down on the moon of Yavin, what, what are the odds that Luke would have made that shot? This kid, this random nobody from the Outer Rim without any experience at all of combat or whatever, you know? He put the entire rebellion at massive risk to fuel his own ego because, you know, I don't need the targeting computer. He even tells them when they ask what's wrong, he says nothing. Luke admits that there's nothing wrong with the targeting computer. Right? So he makes the shot, the Death Star blows up seconds away from firing on the rebels. Only seconds away from ending the rebellion and the Empire wins the Civil War. <clears throat> Sorry. And Luke, thank God, makes the shot and luckily hits the bullseye. But what happens when he returns? What happened when he returns to, uh, to base and meets up with all the rebels? I mean, he's greeted as a hero. Yes, I understand that pilots and people, the ground crew and everyone else, yes, they haven't followed the battle uh, in the same way as people have done in the... Uh, command center obviously so yes when he arrives all they know is that he saved them and they will cheer him on but general dodonna uh, princess leia and all the other officers and politicians and re rebel leaders that you have in that room in that command center who have followed the battle intently intensely even what would their re reaction what reaction would they have had realistically they would have put him in chains and throw him thrown him into a cell into a dungeon this kid is a liability he is a threat and he could have gotten them all killed in a heartbeat had he missed that shot and sure, he could have told them that, you know, I'm uh, I'm connected to the Force. Okay, so they know that Jedi existed. The Force is a thing. But would they really trust it like this? The, the kid is not a Jedi. It's not like, yeah, I'm a full-blown Jedi of the Old Republic, then maybe officers would have been, oh, okay, yeah, they have magical powers, they know their shit. This kid is not on that level. There's, he has no credit to his name at all. Um, apart from uh, Red Leader, who, know, who knew that uh, Luke Skywalker's father was a badass uh, Jedi, apparently. Um, if we watch the ex uh, the uh, extended footage and stuff like that. Uh, but still, is that enough for them to just accept what he did? I doubt it. Even if they, yeah, they, even if they had listened to uh, Red Leader and he told them, you know what? This kid is the son of Anakin Skywalker, the most badass Jedi during the Clone Wars, and everyone would have known about the Anakin Skywalker, he was a poster boy for the Republic and the Jedi Order for that matter. And if they were like, holy hell, is this his kid? Then obviously he has the Force as well. But is that enough for them to just, yeah, yeah, he's not trained. He's been living on a desert planet all his years doing nothing. Yeah, we're fine with him switching off a fully functional targeting computer and uh, winging it in order to save us. No, 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 no. I doubt it. I doubt it. There would have been immense pushback and uh, 
people would not have accepted Luke Skywalker getting a medal for his actions. There would have been long discussions, arguments and stuff like that, what to do with this kid. And there would have been uh, true believers who remembered uh, the Jedi Order in its glory days and uh, what they were about. And then there would obviously be the skeptics who were like, yeah, they were cool, but they lost in the end despite all their magic. So how powerful could that magic be? And remember, it was the Jedi and their powers that brought about the Empire and messed up the entire galaxy. Do we, re do we really want to put our trust in those powers again? Should this kid be allowed to do whatever he wants to do? He's not in control of his powers. He just thought he could do it. And by sheer luck, we all survived. So, if you ask me, the way we saw things play out in the movie, Luke Skywalker and his adventure should have ended after the Battle of Javin. He should have been put in irons and they would have thrown him in a dungeon. And he would have been left there. Unable to go on, move on, and become the hero and all of that. Because what he did in order to win that battle was pretty messed up if you are a unlocker uh, within the rebellion. What would have made more sense is if during the battle he is relying on the... Uh, uh, the uh, targeting computer and he gets hit and the computer gets damaged so it doesn't work anymore so he has to switch it away and he stays in the trench because you know if he if he doesn't do anything everyone dies so he stays in the trench relies on the advice from Obi-Wan and takes the shot and wins the day despite not having a functional uh, targeting computer. Oh my god, what a better ending that would have been. Instead, we got this very weird situation where he just comes off as a idiot, to be honest. I mean, yes, we, the audience, we know what's going on, but no one else does. So had they changed uh, the situation to that the con targeting computer was actually damaged in combat, leaving him no choice but to go in rely on the force to get the job done, then yes, he would have truly been the uh, the hero of the story. Instead of just becoming, you know, a uh, cocky farm boy uh, that uh, switches off a fully functional uh, piece of equipment that he well and truly needs in order to save everyone. I mean, talking about cocky pilots, uh, what's the phrase? Your, uh, your, uh, your mouth is writing checks, your body can't cash. And I feel it kind of applies here too, to be honest. So yeah, uh, the decisions made by Luke in the movie, in this battle, it makes no sense. And... To be honest, it's kind of poor writing, isn't it? Why would he switch it off when it would have made so much more sense if it had just been damaged or destroyed during the battle and he took the cho made the choice to do the necessary thing despite of that, relying on the Force. Anyway, enough of my random rants. Uh, that's all I have for you today and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope uh, you agree with me. If you don't, let me know in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one. May the Force be with you.